in an example problem of using resultant vectors to find the answer to a projectile problem. A pelican flying along a horizontal path drops a fish from a height of 5.4 meters. The fish travels 8 meters horizontally before it hits the water below. What's the pelican's speed? This is from practice D on page 99, and it's number three. All right, we're not gonna be doing our resultant vectors like we did the last ones, but I want you to understand that it is similar to what we're doing. We're going to be looking at the horizontal and vertical components separately. The first thing we're gonna do is draw a picture, and we've got a pelican that's, draw, that's flying in a horizontal path, and it drops a fish from a height of 5.4 meters. So let's make a little line here that's 5.4 meters. Now, it's important to remember that the fish is being carried by the pelican. And so the fish is traveling at the same speed as the pelican when it's dropped. Now, at the moment that that fish is dropped, it begins to succumb to the forces of gravity and it starts to make this horizontal path. So what they're saying is that from the point that it's dropped, at this point, it travels eight meters. This obviously is not drawn to scale. It travels eight meters before it hits the water. So I know the distance in the x direction, and I know the, the, the distance in the y direction and they're asking me to find the speed. Well think about what speed is. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. So if I know the distance that the fish traveled, 8 meters, and I know the time that it took for it to make that 8 meters, remember my horizontal velocity remains constant. Then I'll know the velocity of the fish, and the velocity of the fish is equal to the velocity of the pelican. Now, I need to find time. So my first step is going to be to find time. Now, I have a formula that we used back in our first lessons that says that x is equal to 1 half a, our acceleration, times our time squared. But in this case, when I have an object falling, I know that g is my acceleration, and that's 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm looking for time. Now what about x? We're not talking about the x down here. We're going to change that to y, because we're saying that it takes how long for it to fall 5.4 meters? with an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. So I'm going to rewrite this formula. It's the same, but I'm going to make it look more like what I am describing. My direction is in the y, or the vertical direction. And now I've got g for my acceleration. I need to rearrange to find time. I need to get t by itself on one side of the equal sign. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 half, and that'll cancel this because that's 1, but I have to multiply by 2 also on the other side. Same thing on both sides. 2y is equal to gt squared. Now I'm going to divide both sides by g. That makes this a 1. But now I have t squared. I don't want t squared, so I'm going to do t is equal to the square root of 2y over g. Save this formula because you'll use it. When you do these problems, you'll use it a lot because you always find the time first. Almost always. Find the time it takes for the object to fall. So now let's plug in our numbers. We have our formula, t equals the square root of 2 times my distance in the y direction, 5.4, all divided by 9.81. 
and we're going to put that in the calculator. And when you do that, you will find that it has a time of 1.04 seconds. So now I know how long it took the fish to fall. I know the distance that it traveled as it was falling. During the time interval, it traveled eight meters. So the speed of the fish is equal to eight meters divided by 1.04 seconds. And that's gonna give me a velocity of 7.6 meters per second. And they ask us for speed, not velocity, so we don't have to give a direction for this one. But we do know that the pelican must have been traveling at 7.6 meters per second because that's the speed of the fish.